Ghosts. This is October, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody ready? Yeah. Sending these things work. <laughs> Here. Mike Libby. Here. Justin Jones. Here. Laura Campbell. Here. Teresa Harms. Here. Like a lady is a flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Roll call. Susan Spears. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Michael Libby. Yes. Lauren Campbell. Yes. Teresa Harms. Taken. Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and keep your comments to. I live at 7804 College Drive, and I'm wondering, um, our curbs have been hit by different trucks, and so the curbs are now Look at you, Justin. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like it's our responsibility. Okay. Well, it's um, Lewin Lane and 7804 Cup. Nice sidewalk. I believe we work with you on your um, your frontage sidewalk. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Like that? I'm guessing, this is what I'm guessing. Uh, the one on the north side, northeast side. Edge Drive. I think a truck factory would. And I think. By a garbage truck. Sure. I don't know that because I didn't see it. I just know that it was in excellent condition. And when we pretty new drive. You would like to see your curbs repaired? You would like to see your curbs repaired? Yes. We will see about repairing your curbs. You're welcome. Welcome. Agenda. So moved. Second. Roll call. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. Michael Libby. Yes. Lauren Campbell. Five A new business consideration of the first reading of ordinance number twenty three hundred eight and ordinance amending section one point one two warrants regarding administrative search warrants. Adam, hold oh. Oh. Adam A J. Can we tackle this one? I do wrong. <laughs> <Go ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of a thing. I mean, courts have already stepped in, right? It, it's kind of a thing, yeah. So um, this is this uh, revision. Um, that uh, there's going to be additional case law to define this further. 
um, because a lot of it, the steps that the court needed to go through in order to grant the administrative search warrant. Um, so what I've done is just add in the, the pieces that the city can do. And essentially it's, you would just be notifying if you're intending to get an administrative search warrant, um, you would case. Um, and I do think as it gets more defined, there'll probably be additional tweaks. Hearing none, roll call. Yes. Joseph Jones. Yes. 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 Five B consideration of the second reading of ordinance number twenty three oh seven ordinance of the code of ordinances for the city of Windsor Heights related to conditional use permit standards for approval. Uh, motion. So moved. AJ, or any further discussion on this? Yes. 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 Justin. Justin, is that working? Hold. Currently, we are waiting for SHPO concurrence and approval of, um, I don't want to say it, what The DOT submitted that to them. They came back and requested that more information was taken um, or gotten. We quickly cool things out there. Um, really, it just pertains to the homes, nothing within the right of way. They came back with some more questions, um, provided some more information. Um, long story short, we still have not heard from approval from them. Um, they will probably end up making as a project for I think seven, six or seven homes throughout there that they randomly picked. So that's just an added thing that'll have to be done during construction. Um, but we're just patiently waiting on approval for them to submit plans to the due plans and then go on. But unfortunately, when they they get 30 days to comment, and if they have a little comment, that just starts the clock over again, unfortunately, even though it's a question of minor question so federally federal programs that are tied to the money that we're receiving um just kind of give you an update the dot the money which is federal funds Prior pa prior years past, like university, the MPO or the DOT takes that federal money and then what they call a swap, which gives the local minister funding out there. The DOT doesn't have enough money to give out to that, so things have been changing over the years. Um, I, the last couple of years. Uh, but then it got changed to fully federal sometime last fall. So unfortunately, so we're still looking at letting date of March, March. 2024. Yeah. So they'll have, I think, the 30 days from the last is maybe next. testing just to make sure that we don't have too much going on that would like 
affect foundations or is this Correct. just another hoop to jump through because and then the process is yes that is why they put the font and how they pick these six or seven homes i still don't know why i think right now is what i've understand that any anything that's 40 years old is considered in that possible realm of being it's kind of the DOT is running with 40 years. I think Shippo is saying 50 years. So they're just being conservative and whatnot. So we had Impact 7G do a whole historical analysis of just a desktop. Operation monitoring. So I think so it's a it random selection. Probably be a good idea that we let our constituents. Because, you know, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Yeah, I guess it depends. I, we didn't have a complete start date for construction anyways. So we we're, were just going off. It was spring, summer type of construction. So About uh, Clive Learning Academy yep. on 73rd Street. And so they were under the assumption that we were going to start digging dirt like And, uh, we've been in contact with them it's it's set up to not do have construction in front of there until the summer till school's out so yeah we've been in contact with administration there the principal and whatnot so thanks yep Justin, is there anything that we can elected officials to help advance or speed up this process I'm not, I don't think just because it's at the federal national level right now, it's not at the DOT Cultural. point. So we have a con. Yes, it probably wouldn't hurt. Um, I think the 30 days is what they always get. So they get up to 30 days, whether they do it sooner or not, it's in their part of their thing. So at least it's not during COVID where. So that was that was like months and couldn't do it. And there was nothing to do. So that's state historic preservation office, right? Yeah. Okay. So but I think it's a federal guideline they give for. Um, five or six phases. I think there's on the south end here, there's a one phase to allow all the businesses. Um, it's probably a double phase side of the road that we're doing about every five, 600 feet. Um, and then there's a section then by the school where the school was fine closing down their south parking lot entrance for a period of time, but not having them both between their north and south. So that's why some of it had to be done during school where their bus drop off is. Kurt, uh, on this project, and since it's being uh, let by the DO. order at a later date if desired but on the most recent project 68th uh, the courtesy cart um, line item was the contractor's problem but they priced that in there uh, it's been pretty minimally used I don't know if we have an exact number uh, no, on the 68th think. street project uh, and then because we've got four Not a lot of instances that a resident is going to have to walk um, more than one of those short blocks. If they were on the west side and had to cross the street uh, and are presumably parked then on the nearest east-west road, um, 
except for maybe a short duration in which they're actively paving on 73rd, in which case it happened. And muddy. Um, but I want to bring that up just because it is such a significant uh, line item cost uh, potentially to be included in, in the project. It's something that I'm not aware of being offered elsewhere in cities across the metro. for most situations. I'm not saying they're never going to be inconvenienced because a project like this is inherently inconvenient and frustrating for everybody. Um, but some sort of circumstances arise that we want to include it as a change order or as some alternative service during specific times. Really substantial cost for the project here. So eager to hear any feedback you have because we kind of have to make a decision before this goes out to bid since it's being put out by the DOT. Do we know how many people add a few elderly people that, you know, that walking a, a far distance, even a short block would be a little bit too much to to ask. Do we know, <clears throat> is that something that we're going to run into um, on 73rd? Have we looked into that? I know on college we had issues. Sure that we, if we're doing, if we're getting away with the golf cart, that we have other, other ways for people. from the open house that it, like as far as the the van pickup that sort of, nobody expressed anything about that so i mean the, the van thing we never heard about until late too we're so looking to see if there's any ada ramps on any of the homes um yeah it, you know the other thing i guess with the courtesy card is the current process is what an hour response time mm -hmm. um, so you have to call an hour in advance to get the courtesy is immediate sort of Uber pickup either, I guess, right. right now. That's part of the reason it's probably not being utilized very much is that would be cost. Teresa, can you guys hear me? Yeah. We can hear you. Okay, so just real quick on the, um, I have gotten a couple of calls from elderly neighbors who live um, on town. with this in particular, and they were hoping um, one gentleman, just because his wife can't walk very far, um, expressed um, concerns. And so I can give you their contact information and maybe we can just reach out in to the north end of 73rd Street. Um, and so um, anyways, I just share it and I, I would like for us to um, at least touch base with them. I think. Um, at least one of them expressed that his wife doesn't have um, ability to walk very far, and that was um, a question and concern he had with when we were starting the project. Obviously, we don't we're not making any decisions tonight, um, but you're just putting that out there as it's going to something I. before you, Council. Anything further, Justin? Nope, unless there's other questions. The packet, Ms. Harms. You bet, thank you. Um, so I just wanna... Oh, 
Festival, so a phenomenal event, and just wanted to say kudos to everybody and that put in all the hard work uh, to pull that off and make it work. Um, a huge afterwards and just said thanks for uh, a really fun event so um, congratulations to you ladies Poole County gun safety campaign being put on by uh, the Board of Supervisors and Poole County Public Health um, largely uh, being driven by Poole County Public Health and they are providing to be available working with um, law enforcement um, agencies um, and I think libraries were the other locations where you could go and get to gun safety um, blocks and so um, just going in and then the project in our newsletter moving forward so people know that that's available. Um, League of Cities provided a legislative update just kind of talking about what um, the expectations are for the coming legislative session. The biggest item really is we've heard legislators talking about uh, with the goal to have zero uh, income tax in Iowa. Uh, the governor announced in September that there's a two and so that's setting the state for um, the legislature, the governor, who are hoping to reduce, um, continue to reduce income tax um, cuts. And then um, not a lot of other big issues. Um, there's a couple of bills that are carried over from the um, expecting some corrections as well as um, the Boards and Commissions uh, legislation that has really not what that looks like yet, but um, the Board of Commissions will be messing on that and how it potentially impacts the city. So, we, um, the uh, County uh, was able to apply for one of the uh, sustainability uh, grants available through the federal government because the state didn't apply for it. So, uh, Polk County was able to receive a million dollars uh, for sustainable um, for in a sustainable planning grant, uh, and they're largely working on the county level um, at this juncture. Project, um, but looking, you know, maybe in the next next year or the next two years, really being able to help cities and then um, once we have those slides available for the presentation that was provided, a will test those. So, I wanted to kind of put that on it. County and what Max said. Hearing about what the county's working on as well. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Um, thank you to everyone who helped make the 2023 Fall Festival's success. Chief Roth, Chief Meese, and their teams, Jason, Bill, Brian, and Public Works, AJ Nate, and his wife, Jen. From the chamber, our sponsors, our friends at Cumulus Media, and all of our volunteers, but especially Susan, um, for uh, everything to make it a success. I was so pleased with the turnout. I think that we had um, close to 3,000. Problem on Saturday for my neighbor's wedding. Um, that's all I got. committee agenda, but nothing that's necessarily a hot item. So we've made the executive decision. Cool. 
we we don't have much to talk about right now. Uh, thank you very much to um, an amazing weekend. Um, that that was really it was really something to to see and to take part in. Um, I, I was really struck by the number of businesses that took part in the booths, and, and that was really a nice opportunity. Wonderful. I thoroughly enjoyed the silent disco, by the way, Lauren, um, that, that started a little late. It just brought her computer and started the silent disco on her own without the DJ being there. It was just a wonderful event, and I think that uh, Windsor Heights can say uh, a big thank you to everyone that was involved, and, and uh, I am. meeting <clears throat> focused a lot on what our potential budget short call, shortfall would look like and what service cuts would look like. particularly people who depend on using the bus to get around, uh, who don't have the option of saying, okay, I won't ride the bus today, I'll drive. Um, and talking. Them uh, working on passing their franchise fee increase um, is a part of that. And part of it will be what other communities would do in order to so increasing what those amounts would be. And that that's a full range of things. Um, and of course, our, I think the last time I told you, our, our total is somewhere between, um, what would you say, Lauren, like 7,000 some years? Money, but it's not compared to what other communities would do, right? Um, and so um, continued conversations to come um, a lot. It's still my belief that we need to have as much transit as possible in our community. And of course, so um, until I hear from you guys that it's a horrible idea, I'm going to keep saying yes. We're going to keep pushing and we're going to keep supporting what's being done in the in the big picture and hope we can get some of our outlying communities to stay on and support as well. Um, we will have a meeting tomorrow with Amanda, the new CEO, so AJ and the mayor meeting um cities uh, city managers mayors um along with um commissioners and their alternate so just kind of touch base talk about what the, the plan is for the next year and, and get to know her a little bit better like level but there is such a wide disparity among people who utilize that to go downtown right. which they're not the planning we discussed last time some of that reduction could mean as much as a third of reduction yeah. ridership yep yeah. um i believe it was a, a huge success i did see a lot of people from not just windsor heights but outlying areas which was nice one vendors that uh showed up to kind of showcase their their businesses so that was nice to to see and the businesses came from Windsor Heights and Urbandale so really nice to see how everybody kind of flowed together and how it was just a nice nice event and sold out 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it was, I, I was shocked. I didn't think I was like eight. How are we going to And the, the, um, a lot of the food truck people said how nice everybody was, how respectful, how, you know, even if we gave them the wrong meal, they were like, ah, it still looks good. And so. Thank you to everybody who helped, who handed out flyers, who put up the bulletin or the, the posters. Um, we couldn't have made this a success. myself a few days off and now I'm back into um, Veterans Day planning. So uh, Angie from Classic Kids and Liz from meeting tomorrow to discuss more on Veterans Day. Um, we It will take place November 10th at the Community Event Center from 1130 to 1:30. Um, and I know that we've had a lot of Windsor Heights residents moving in and out have a lot of people who are no longer living in Windsor Heights anymore. So if you have, you know, friends or relatives or neighbors that, you know, moved in, if you would just, you know, let me know if they are a veteran so that I can make sure to get out an invitation to them, just because it is hard for me to find the information website, and they already have to have put in a homestead for veterans for me to be able to find it. And sometimes it takes six months for that to come up on Polk County Assessor. So um, if anybody has any ideas on how to find this information easier than me sitting watching football, Assessor, um, because it is no longer public information. Isn't it on the website? It is no longer on the website. Oh, I, well, I. And then it would show everybody in Windsor Heights, but that is no longer. Uh, I provide to the city themselves and versus me, and they refused. Okay. Hmm. So, um. really don't know it did happen just it, I, I saw pictures i'll tell you you were there there was photos that you but there. how much i remember about and, and sleep deprivation really kicked in too so other than that i think that's that's it if you would like to we are looking for sponsors still for veterans day if anybody would like to give any money towards uh the the meal or even uh provide some donation of gift cards to Quick things uh, first, uh, Council Member Campbell is being very generous. It was actually an IT specialist, Campbell, that solved the IT issue at the CBC. Um, Mid American is going to be doing some animal deterrent uh, installations on the poles. Uh, I did hear back from Councilmember Campbell on a spring cleanup date, uh, potentially pushing that back further than the currently proposed May 11th, just so that uh, garage sales aren't suffering from April showers. Uh, welcome any other feedback from other council members of the wall. I'll agree with that. I didn't respond back to you, but I think I agree with what Lauren says. I mean, going that early, it's cold. Yeah. still too. So if we could push it back a week or two, I think that would be right. So weekend and then the following weekend is spring cleanup. So you can put whatever on your curb that you didn't, you sell. didn't yeah. sell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and everything else is in the report. That's okay. Uh, nothing else.
Yeah. Thanks, everybody.